I just dropped by to explain why the wife hasn't been at work, Mr. Holmes. She's that sorry to be letting you down. Oh, quite all right, Mr. Hudson. I quite understand. I knew Mrs. Hudson must be unwell. She so very rarely stays away. Is it the flu? Asian flu. That's what it's called. Trust these foreigners that come up with something really nasty. Uh, she'll be all right, though. Tough old girl she is. And he's uh, Dr. Watson about. He might like to look in on her. Unfortunately, Watson is away on the continent. In Bern, I understand, for a European medical conference. He won't be back for another fortnight. Oh, oh well, uh, oh, the missus will be up and about the right as rain before then. Well, I'll be getting along. <laughs> Day to you, Mr. Holmes. I'll, I'll see me own way. I'll, bye for now. Well, goodbye. And give Mrs. Hudson my best wishes for a speedy recovery. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Bye. <clears throat> so I'm all alone for a bit. We present the stories of Sherlock Holmes. The Curious Case of Ira Pasha. Almost all the cases of Mr. Sherlock Holmes have been chronicled by my husband, Dr. John Watson. This is the one case he has not written about, simply because great care has been taken to keep the whole affair a secret from him. Mr. Holmes advises me to write it all down in order to rid it from my mind. I hope it will do so, for it has been one of the worst experiences of my life. It occurred when my husband went away to Switzerland to attend a European medical conference. About two weeks after John had left, something occurred that threw my life into grave confusion. I was in utter despair. There was only one person I could turn to. In spite of the lateness of the hour, I hired a handsome cab, and with minutes it was clocking its way through the stormy night to Baker Street and Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mary Watson. My dear, third enough to Come in, come in. Oh, sorry. To call like this. Yes. Now, come up the stairs to the oh. sitting room. There's a, a good fire still crackling in the grate. You can take off that wet cloak and bonnet. Now, come along. I simply had to come. There we are. Now, now then, not another word. Not a word until you're more comfortable. Now, now place yourself in front of the fire. Oh, and thank you. Tell me what it is that's so upset you. It's not Watson. There's not bad news from Switzerland. No, no, John is all right. His last letter was very cheerful. It's nothing to do with him. That is, that is, it's you know, very indirectly, you see. I think he... No, 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 no. I, I cannot help you unless you explain quite clearly what all this is about. I think a small drink might help you. <laughs> there. Now, here, drink this. Come along. Oh... Thank you. Right. Now, start at the beginning and tell me everything. Well, it started late this afternoon. I'd been doing a little shopping, and when I returned, I found a stranger on the doorstep. A young lady, dressed in the height of fashion, but with an elegance that was not English. She was very beautiful in a dusky sort of way. She asked for my husband, and I told her he was not available. I thought she wanted a doctor, you see, and started to recommend John's friend across the road. But she asked to come in and talk. Well, naturally, I agreed. I'm sorry that my husband is not at home. He's abroad at the moment. I do not expect him back for the next week or ten days. Oh, that is most unfortunate. I need his help so much. It, it was a, how you say, a, a last resort. Please sit down and tell me what is wrong. I ill in need of medical care. I... Oh, no. No, it is nothing like that. I I did not know that Dr. Watson was a married man. I, I, I'm sorry. There's no need to apologize. But what is it you want? You obviously do not know my husband. No. No, we have never met. And you are not ill, so what is it that brings you here? Mrs. Watson, 
It is so hard for me to explain. This is all so different from what I had imagined. I do not know how to begin. I have been in Great Britain only seven weeks. I came from Turkey. My name is Ida Pasha. My mother came from Takar in Afghanistan. That is where I was born. I've been traveling with my fiancé, Anton Fournier. He is in trading enterprises, a junior partner in an international export organization. We, we stay at the Bedford Hotel, Bailey Street. This should be the prelude to, to our marriage and, and, and the start of our honeymoon. But unless I can produce a thousand pounds within the next two days, it, it will all end in tragedy. A thousand pounds? But, but I don't understand. Why should you need such a vast sum of money? It is Anton. He has to pay the money to a man named Grigo Harat within two days. Or he will be ruined. He owes this money and cannot pay it back? But what about his firm, oh, his no, partner? No, no, you do not understand. And I, I express myself so poorly. Anton, he does not owe the money. He, he He's being forced to pay it. He, he is being blackmailed. Oh, what? Blackmailed? By the man Grigor Harat? Well, can he not go to the police? Oh, no. You see, there were stolen goods brought into this country by Anton without him knowing. But the man, he has the evidence to say that Anton was guilty. He will not hand over the evidence if he's, if he's not paid 1,000 pounds. If he does not get the money, then he exposes Anton's crime. Oh, dear. Well, I am most dreadfully sorry for you, but when I... I cannot see any way I can help, and forgive me for asking, but but why do you seek out my husband? He's unknown to you, just a name. He's simply a struggling London doctor. Why did you come here to him? Uh, I, I, I cannot say. It was a wild idea. I I have no friends. I, I, I do not know anybody in London. It, I, I was at my wit's end. I'm sorry. I shall go back to Anton. We must find some other way of raising the money. I'm sorry. I go. No, no. Wait. I'm not satisfied. How did you know that John Watson lives here? Who told you about us? And I repeat, why did you think of turning to him for help? I, I knew his name. I found the address from, from the medical list of doctors in the city. That is all. There is no need for explanations. I will leave you. No, please. There is more to this than you say. I must know. What has my husband to do with you? You have not been married to him very long. You were not childhood, sweetheart. No. <laughs> no, I've only known my husband since he practiced in Paddington and lived for a number of years in Bay Street. Then his early life is unknown to you. Well, I know he was honorably discharged from the army after a distinguished military career as a doctor in India and Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yes. That is where he met Kanina Pasha. Nina Pasha. My mother. She was highborn, the royal blood of the princess. They were never married, of course, but I am her love child. I am your husband's daughter. I couldn't believe my ears. It, it didn't make sense. I, I sat looking into the eyes of this stranger. This beautiful young woman who had made the most extraordinary claim. Then I realized that part of her beauty was because, in contrast to her complexion and the jet black hair, her eyes were grey-blue. John's eyes. Mr. Holmes, you, you cannot imagine what a shock this has been oh, to me. Oh, yes, I can, Mary, but try to think dispassionately. The very fact that this woman has grey-blue eyes does not mean a thing. It will take far more proof than that to establish her claim to be Watson's daughter. However, pray continue with your story. I imagine you were stunned by her statement, but surely you questioned her. You didn't calmly accept what she said as a fact. No, no, of course not. But I was shocked, and then, then very angry. I accused her of being an imposter, of making it all up for some reason. I am not lying, Mrs. Watson. My mother told me everything many years ago. She was a brave and wonderful woman. She did not wish to bring disgrace upon my father or make any claims. He bore the brunt of her shame alone. I'm sure that Dr. Watson does not know of this unhappy heritage. I... I still refuse to believe it. You... you cannot expect me to. Why any one of your kind can come here and make such claims, I... Well, I refuse to allow you to. To... 
disclose these facts, these dreadful lies. I assure you, they are not lies. And I shall not disclose them. Why should I? I have nothing to gain by it. I simply came here because I... I was in despair and, and wondered if he, if he could help me. Well, he cannot. Even if he were here, I would not allow him to. It is a preposterous claim that you are making. I do not believe a word of what you have been saying. Then I will go. But I do have proof. Photographs, letters, much proof of who is my father. I'm sorry to have caused you anxiety, but I shall go. Wait! You say you have proof and carry that proof with you? Yes. Well, not here, of course, but amongst my luggage. I'm sorry we've met in these unhappy circumstances. One moment, if I am able to help you. How, how do we get in touch? Through the hotel, the Bedford Hotel. Or better still, my husband and I will be lunching at the Kabul restaurant in Charlotte Street tomorrow, 12.30. Perhaps you would care to join us there. If you do not, then I understand. Good afternoon to you, Mrs. Watson. So, you see, I do not know what to do. Is this woman speaking the truth, Mr. Holmes? Is she John's daughter? And if so, what am I supposed to do? You first of all keep your head. Don't you realize that you could be being blackmailed in exactly the same manner as this person claims her lover is being blackmailed? No, Mary, you do nothing. You wait until you hear from me. And and when will that be? Before noon, tomorrow. And meanwhile, I shall call upon Grigor Harat. Oh. oh, then there is such a person. You know him? Not personally, no, but I soon shall. He's one of the most dangerous international crooks in London. Yes. It's about time I crossed swords with Grigor Harat. I was aware that my problem was a deeply personal one. I had never questioned John about his past. I knew he'd been a doctor in the Indian Army and been the attractive man he was in his youth. He must have had many lady friends. But to be confronted by his daughter was a shocking experience. I knew that Sherlock Holmes would see it all in a completely different light. But I had gone to him for help, and he had given me advice. So I could only obey and wait. This table taken? Mind if I sit here, mate? No, no, help yourself. What? What? If it isn't Mr. Holmes. Hello, Jasper. I thought I might find you here. Well, well, well quite like old times, ain't it? <clears throat> isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Doing well, Jasper? Can't complain. Straight as a die, of course. Oh, of course. But not above earning a few pounds. Mm -hmm. Can't say no, not these days. Why, Mr. Holmes? What have you got in mind? Can't be anything crooked. No, 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 no. Just information. At one time in your dubious career, you worked for Mr. Grigor Harats, didn't you? I want to know everything about him. Well, I'll tell you all I can. And if it helps you to nail that blighter to the wall, then it'll be a real pleasure. Yeah, I worked for him, all right. A few years ago, it was. And he shot me good and proper. He lives in a house in Sutgard Place. Two floors. His only two servants, a sort of manservant and a cook who lives out. Keeps a real posh place. Uh, his interests are uh, pottery and photography. Mm. Where does he keep all this uh, secret information? In a safe, uh, back of the dark room, but no one can get in there. Uh, he has an alarm system, all controlled. Oh, yeah. Very up to date is our Mr. Erard. All the latest devices. I see. So no one can get into the house without the alarm bells ringing? Yeah, that's about it. But there must be a switch, a main switch. If he has electricity installed, there must be a box where the switches are. No, that's right. It's in the hallway uh, above the act stand. They're sort of hidden away in the corner. It looks like part of the act rack. Oh, he's a clever one, is Mr. Erath, but he's as slick as a snake. Better be careful if you tangle with that one, Mr. Holmes. I remember your advice, Jasper. Thank you. Oh, and, uh... Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you kindly. Oh, the number of the house is number 12, by the way. <laughs> Thinking of doing a bit of burglary, Mr. Holmes? If so, well, the best of luck. I spent a troubled night and woke tired and strained. I waited anxiously for news from Sherlock Holmes. He was the most dependable man, and sure enough, just before 12 o'clock, the doorbell rang. He was there with a carriage waiting and drove me to the Kabul restaurant in Charlotte Street. By this time, I wondered if it had been a dream, if Ara Pasha did exist, if there was a friend called Anton Fournier. I rather hoped there wasn't. But there was. I'm so glad that you came, Mrs. Watson. 
This is Anton. How do you do, Mrs. Watson? I've heard much about you. How do you do, Mr. Fournier? Uh, may I present Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Mr. Holmes, this is Miss Ara Pasha and Mr. Anton Fournier. Hello, Mr. Holmes. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. Uh, may we talk before we order our meal? Yes, yes, of course. Perhaps I'm the one who should explain. I seem to be the cause of all the trouble. I take it that Mrs. Watson has explained my difficulties to you, Mr. Holmes. I think I am aware of the situation. Now, tell me how you became involved with this man, Grigor Harout. I find that out. Uh, I am a foreigner to this country, like Ira. I import the goods, and this man, he says, that he finds in the China vases that I bring here is the opium, the heroin, the drugs, you understand? I cannot prove that I know nothing of this. But he has the bills of loading. He says he has the proof, and he wants the money before he destroys the proof. Exactly what is the proof? He has a sample of China, a small vase, exactly like the all of my cargo that lies in the wharf at Lamas. He has papers. Much evidence. Mm, I see. And what of you, Miss Pasha? Has he any evidence, any papers against you? He knew my mother. He knows a great deal about my family. I have to support Anton. Oh, Mr. Holmes, this is very distressing for me. I know of your friendship with... with, with, with Dr. Watts. For his sake, I wish that you can help us. I shall do my best. But you do realize that we're all known to this man, Herat? I cannot confront him openly. He knows me. And I should be unable to negotiate in any way. Both of you are known to him, and so... There is only one person who can help us. And that is you, Mary. Me? But what can I do? Anton will give you a sample of his chinaware. You'll go to number 12, Sutgard Place, and offer it to Mr. Grigor Harat. You will talk knowledgeably about the china and porcelain, and then you will contrive to find the alarm switch. It must be perfectly planned. You are capable of doing this, for everyone's sake. Now listen most carefully, for it all depends upon you, Mary. And so, you bring me this example, and you say it is for sale. How much do you want, madame? Five hundred pounds. Hmm? It is worth more than that. Surely you are able to value it more accurately. Well, I, I know that it is of the continental kind. It is a product of the Vincennes period. See, the base is marked with two swords and the letter A. It is of the year 1753. Yes, yes, that is true. How knowledgeable you are. You say these things as though you have just learned them. Have you just learned them, Mrs. Watson? I... Uh, I beg your pardon? You surely did not think that I would be taken in by this obvious pretense. The girl, Ira Pasha, she goes to you and she says that she is your husband's daughter. You believe her. And her lover, the man Anton, gives you this kind of ass. Why did you come here, Mrs. Watson? Did you think you could trick me? I am Grigor Harat. And I know more of what goes on in London society than any man alive. Well. What sort of bargain shall we make? You wish me to give you proof that your husband is not the father of that young lady. <laughs> Why surprise you? Do I not? Uh, I seem to know everything. I... I came here because I thought you would wish to buy the vase. I don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> if you do not wish to do business, then with your permission, I shall leave. But of course, you may leave immediately. I am a gentleman. I do not cause trouble with the married men. Ah, permit me. Here, take the vase. Tell Anton Fournier that my bargain remains good. I want the money. He knows the amount. I want it by tonight. Otherwise, I shall expose him. And the young lady who says she is your husband's daughter. You may leave now. Very well. I shall go. You have won, Mr. Herat. I acknowledge that. It has been a great pleasure, madame. That is way. Eh? Um... Before I go, there yeah. is one thing, one very important thing that I wish to know, and that is, have you proof that this Ira Pasha is the daughter of... of, <laughs> of... You are very concerned about that, are you not, my dear lady? But it never pays to delve into the past. I only ask because... Be... Oh. Huh? Oh. I, I'm afraid that all the emotion is too, too much. I grow faint and... Yeah. Oh, madame, madame. Oh, typical of a woman, fainted away. Well, I dare, a little brandy will revive you. And from now on, nothing will alter my plans. Oh. Oh. There. There. Here, here you 
car, drink this down, and get out of my house. Come on, Mrs. Watson. You have failed in whatever you wish to achieve. Drink. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I will go now. Goodbye, Mr. Harris. Goodbye, Mrs. Watts. I had done all I came to do. I had managed to deceive this man to the extent that he left me alone in the hall, where I pulled down the alarm switch. I believed he had not noticed, and all I could do was wait. I knew that Sherlock Holmes would have calculated everything to the nearest second. Come. Come, Anton. This is the way. The windows will not be barred. The alarm is off. Come, gently now. evidence to get money from your so-called lover <laughs> and from Mrs. Watson. <laughs> she must be a great fool to have believed your story. <sighs> With what we shall make out of this and the traffic within the China delivery, we shall be able to retire most comfortably. <laughs> eh? That is all I have ever wished for. <laughs> I want nothing but the riches and power. <laughs> that fool of a woman. <laughs> most women are fools. Yeah, all of them. Except you, my darling. Stay just where you are. Do not move, either of you. Oh, no, no, no. Not while I can fight. I never knew the conclusion of this most curious case. Sherlock Holmes was careful to protect me from the details. I did read of the death of Grigor Harad and the sudden disappearance of the young woman who called herself Ara Pasha. Mr. Holmes thanked me for my part in the affair, but I was most unhappy about it all. Uh, there's nothing to feel at all guilty about, Mary. You've seen the death of a monstrous man. Grigor Harat would have ended up dead somehow or another. He was so evil that someone would have had their revenge sooner or later. But, but Anton and, and, and that woman, Arthur. Ah, when thieves fall out, anything can happen. Yes, but was she? Was she John's daughter? She was a liar and a cheat, but she still had John's eyes. What do I do now? What I have always advised, you do nothing. If the contents of Grigor Harat's dark room reveals photographs, evidence, then you pretend not to know about it. And you must never mention this to your husband. Not ever. Do you understand, Mary? There are some things best left alone, and this is one of them. You love your husband, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Then be silent, Mary. And let things remain as they are. This is our secret. Be silent. <laughs> Listen again next Sunday to The Stories of Sherlock Holmes with Graham Armitage as Holmes and Kerry Jordan as Dr. Watson.